Okay, so the other application of de Moivre's theorem is about finding some identities, this time for sine to the power of n theta or cos to the power of n theta. So the technique we've seen allows us to say, write, say, cos 3 theta in terms of powers of cos, but we're going to try and do something the opposite way around now. We're going to try and see if it's possible to express cos cubed theta in terms of a linear combination of cos 3 theta and cos theta with no powers. So this is like the reverse process, but actually the process doesn't end up looking that similar. There are some things that are similar, but there are some things that are different. In order for us to be able to come up with this, we need to come up with some new, um, new identities that are gonna be really useful, basically. So here I've got that if z is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta, what is z plus one over z and z minus one over z? So we better think what z plus 1 over z actually means? Well, it really means z plus z to the minus 1. So that means we have cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos theta plus i sine theta. This is for the first one here to the minus 1. This is for z plus 1 over z, which is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos of minus theta, we've multiplied the angle now by minus theta, plus i sine of, min of minus theta, which can be written as cos theta plus i sine theta plus cos theta, because of the um, it being an even function, minus i sine theta. These cancel. And so it simplifies to cos of 2 cos of theta. So for our first thing that we've got here, we have that z plus 1 over z equals cos 2 cos theta. Similarly, when I do z minus 1 over z, I'm going to come up with a very similar bit that we've got over here, apart from these, will change. So we'll end up with cos theta plus i sine theta. This time it's going to be minus cos of minus theta plus i sine of minus theta, which is cos theta plus i sine theta. Now I'm going to try and do this bit a bit quicker. Minus cos theta. This would become a minus i, but because of the minus, it becomes a plus i. So it becomes a plus i sine theta. The coses cancel and it just simplifies to 2i sine theta. So the other one we have is that z minus 1 over z is 2i sine theta. And then you can pretty much guess what these ones are going to be. z to the n plus 1 over z to the n. Well, it's going to be the exact same calculations that we've got up here, but everywhere that we had theta, it's going to say n theta. So it's going to be 2 cos of n theta. And obviously z to the n minus 1 over z to the n is going to be the same thing. It's going to be 2i sine of n theta. And these are going to be really important for us to try and do these identities on the next few pages. OK. So I've written them down, the results that we're going to need to use, which we have over here. And really, these are going to be committed to memory from the amount of times that we will use them in this exercise and the future exercises. So how do we do this? How are we going to express cos to the power of 5 theta in the form a cos 5 theta plus b cos 3 theta plus c cos theta? We're going to need to use these results that we have here. So it says, number one, raise the right hand side to the required power and raise the left hand side to the same power. Well, that's because we're talking in this case, we're talking about cos of five, cos to the power of five theta. So I'm going to use this identity. OK, I'm going to use this one to start off with. So I will have z plus one over z is equal to two cos theta. And if I wanted to create a cos to the power of five theta, I'm going to raise that to the power of five and I'm going to raise that to the power of five. So 2 cos theta to the power of 5 is 32 cos to the power of 5 theta. I'm just pushing this onto this side. And that is going to be equal to z plus 1 over z to the power of 5. Obviously, 2 to the power of 5 is 32. 
Now we're going to do binomial expansion. So here's something that is similar to it. Now the coefficients for the binomial expansion with power of 5 goes 1, 5, 10, 10, 5, 1. So we're going to have z to the power of 5 plus 5z to the 4 times by 1 over z. Then we're going to have uh, 10 z cubed times 1 over z squared plus 10 z squared times 1 over z cubed plus 5 z cubed times by 1 over z to the power of 4 plus 1 over z to the power of 5. So I'm going to group some things together immediately. I'm going to first of all take the z to the power of 5 and the 1 over z to the power of 5 because I think that's going to be useful. Then I'm going to simplify this one which is going to be 5z cubed and I also have this one. Mm, I've done something wrong with the powers, my apologies. The powers should be decreasing every time. I've gone z5, z4, z3, z2 and suddenly z cubed which doesn't make any sense. So that should just be z to the power of 1. And this whole expression that I've just underlined is going to be plus 5 times 1 over z cubed. So I've dealt with those two now. Then the only ones I've got left are this one, which is just going to be plus 10z plus this one, which is 10 times 1 over z. So I've put them in these groups. I've put them in this group, this group, and this group, where we can use something to do with the information that we've got written at the top here. So I'm just going to keep this one as z to the power of 5 plus 1 over z to the power of 5. This one I'm going to factorise out the 5, so I have z cubed plus 1 over z cubed. And I'm going to factor out the 10 so that I have z plus 1 over z. Remember, this is what 32 cos to the power of 5 theta is. Now, using this pattern that I've got up here, I know what this is equal to. z to the power of 5 minus 1 over z to the power of 5, also oh, plus 1 over z to the power of 5, is going to be 2 cos 5 theta. So this is 2 cos 5 theta. This is going to be 5 times 2 so, uh, cos 3 theta, so that's 10 cos 3 theta, and this is going to be 20 cos theta. So 32 cos to the power of 5 theta is equal to this. I'm then going to make sure I divide everything by 32. So 2 over 32 is 1 over 16. 10 over 32 is 5 over 16 and 20 over 32 is 10 over 16, or 5 over 8. So we have now successfully written a power of cosine in terms of these linear expressions that are, don't have powers, but they are just like this that we've got written. So in our case, a is 1 over 16, b is 5 over 16, and c is 5 over 8. OK, let's see if we can do another one, but this time it is going to be with sine instead. So we're going to prove that sine cubed is equal to minus a quarter sine 3 theta plus 3 quarters sine theta. So we're doing a power one. We're going to start off by using this bit of the identity. So we know that z minus 1 over z. You may like to do this as z minus z to the minus 1 if you prefer to do binomial like that. I don't really mind. I'm going to stick with this. So I know that this cubed is going to be equal to 2i sine theta all cubed. Well, 2i sine theta cubed is going to be minus 8i. i cubed is minus i and 2 cubed is 8. So we're going to have minus 8i sine cubed theta is equal to this left hand side binomial expansion. Remember, for 3, for cube, it's going to go 1, 3, 3, 1 as the binomial coefficients. So you're going to have z cubed plus 3z squared multiplied by 1 over z plus 3z multiplied by 1 over z squared plus 
minus 1 over z cubed. And there's going to be some patterns. So we get 7 cubed minus 3z. This one's then going to change to a plus 3 times 1 over z or 3 over z minus 1 over z cubed. I'm then going to group them together so that I have z cubed minus 1 over z cubed. And then I have here minus 3 lots of z minus 1 over z. Careful for this one when you factorise it. It's got a plus, so it will have to be a negative and a negative when you factorise. So this is what minus 8i sine cubed theta is equal to. I can now use the identities that I've got on the right hand side. This time I'm going to be using this one to try and replace them. So z cubed minus 1 over z cubed is going to be 2i sine 3 theta. And then I'm going to have for the next bit, it is just going to be 2i sine theta, but it's being multiplied by 3. So it is going to be 6i sine theta. Luckily, they all feature i, so I can cancel i everywhere. And then I'm going to divide everything by negative 8. So sine cubed theta is going to be minus a quarter sine 3 theta minus 3 quarters. Oh, I'm dividing it by negative 8, so it's going to be plus 3 quarters sine theta, just as it was shown in the question that we've got there, okay? So let's just go through the list. We raised both of them to the power. We did the binomial expansion, which was in this section that we had here. We then used the identities once again, and the identities we used once again were to convert to these bits. And the last step I said was remember to isolate by dividing by any coefficients on the left hand side. So we're dividing by this minus 8a, uh, 8i that we had. So that should be enough for, to be able to help you to get on with exercise 1d. But I'm going to do one more example just in case people want a little bit more help on this. So if you want to, you can have a go at this question. You can pause the video and have a go here, but I'm going to keep going. OK, so I know that I'm trying to come up with an expression with sine to the power of 4 theta. Now, I know the if it's sine to the power of 4 theta, that z minus 1 over z is equal to 2i sine theta. So z minus 1 over z to the power of 4 is going to be equal to 2i sine theta to the power of 4. Now, 2 to the power, 2i to the power of 4 is just going to be 16, because i to the power of 4 is 1. So 16 sine to the power of 4 theta is going to be equal to the binomial expansion of this. I'm just going to double check my binomial coefficients. So I'm going to have 4 choose 1 is 4. 4 choose 2 is 6, 4 choose 3 is 4. Okay, great. So it goes 1, 4, 6, 4, 1 for my binomial coefficients. So it is going to be z to the power of 6 plus 4z to the 5 times by minus 1 over z plus 6z to the 4 minus 1 over z squared plus 4z cubed minus 1 over z cubed. Uh, I've done this power. Why have I done it to the power of 6? That's ridiculous. Should have been power 4. Let's fix all of this rubbish that I've been doing. So it should say z to the power of 4, z cubed, z squared, and z. And then our last one will be minus 1 over z, all to the power of 4. So we're looking for those patterns. OK, I've got z to the power of 4 minus 4z squared plus, this time it's going to be a plus 6z, then I'm going to have a minus uh, 4, because the z's will cancel for that one. That's not true at all. <laughs> the z's will have cancelled in this one. This is the mistake I've made. So you've got 6z squared divided by a z squared. This is just going to be a 6. You've then got a plus a minus 4 multiplied by 1 over z squared. And then at the end, you have got a plus 1 over z to the 4. So we're hoping to always find out these pairs that we've got. So I've got a z to the power of 4 plus 1 over z to the power of 4. I've then got a minus 4 lots of z squared plus 1 over z squared. I'm pleased that these have both got pluses here and here because they've got cosines with the answer. And at the end, I have plus 6. 
So 16 sine to the power of 4 theta is equal to this. This is equal to 2 cos 4 theta minus 8 cos 2 theta because of the coefficient of 4 plus 6. So sine to the power of 4 theta when I divide by 16 is an 8 cos to the power of 4 theta minus a half cos 2 theta plus 3 over 8 when you divide by 16 there. So a is an 8, b is minus a half, and c is 3 eighths. Now I'm going to do part b, which says hence find the exact value of the integral of sine to the power of 4 theta d theta. So this was part a of the question, and part b of the question, we want to integrate between 0 and pi over 2, sine to the power of 4 theta, but I'm not going to do sine to the power of 4 theta because that's not easy to integrate. Instead, I'm going to integrate this. So integration, oh my goodness, do I remember this? Yes, yeah, sine to the power of 4 theta, and it's going to be 1 over 32. This is a minus, so it is going to be here a sine differentiates to cos, so um, cos integrates to sine, so it's going to be 1 over 4. And then you're going to have 3 over 8 theta between 0 and pi over 2. So when I substitute pi over 2 in here, I'm going to have 1 over 32 sine of 2 pi minus a quarter sine of pi plus 3 eighths times pi over 2 minus sine of 0, sine of 0 and 0, which is just going to be a 0, sine of 2 pi is 0, sine of pi is 0, so we just get 3 pi over 16 is the answer. And I want to see if that is the answer. I think my calculator can do this. Um, no, I don't think I've got the mode on here for me to do this, but 3 pi over 16 should be the answer for the exact value of this for, exercise, uh, for this question. Um, my group haven't actually done this integration bit, which is why I've rushed through this a bit, but if you're looking at this now for revision, you should know how to do all of that integration without much help from me. So that's a big exercise, but there's lots of practice to do in here. Make sure you can tell the difference between whether it's something with a power, in which case you use the second technique, or whether it's something that is not with a power, but it's something with a linear um, argument, and you're going to use the other technique that we have here. Okay, well done for getting through this. It's not easy.